Algebra Tours taking a look at the practice quiz for 6.1 through 6.5. What was going on here? This section was all about the radicals. We saw that we could rewrite these as rational exponents. We saw that we could rewrite these with division or rationalizing the denominator. Lots of stuff going on here. I'll do my best to make this as easy as possible. If you're in period 5, you might be Emma Byrne, we get, you might be Josh, thanks for tuning in if that's you. If you're in eighth period, you might be Ben, you might be Sarah, you might be Megan. So big ups if you're watching. So for here, we're watching and trying to find the real square roots of 36 over 169. So keep in mind that whenever we take a square root, of that 36 over 169, we're allowed to have two answers because if we square whatever this might be, we can end up with the answer or the fraction that we just had. So you're allowed to break this apart if you want to, it's saying that you have the square root of 36 over the square root of 169, which is eventually plus or minus square root of 36 is 6, square root of 169 is 13. So you would say that 6 over 13 is one answer, along with negative 6 over 13. That one's pretty simple. Key thing here is to remember that you'll have two answers. Because whenever we take square roots, chances are we have the positive version and the negative version. We'll see that here also when we're finding the two real solutions for x squared equals 49. X squared is already isolated, so we can just take square roots on both sides, leaving us x equals plus or minus the square root of 49, which, when simplified, plus or minus 7, that's what x could equal. Make sure to use commas when you separate these. That's super crucial. Let's read this wordy problem out. We see that the voltage V of an audio speaker can be represented by V equals 2 times the square root of P, where P is the power of the speaker. An engineer wants to, to design a speaker with 625 watts of power. What will the voltage be? So they're giving us a form of the power, and we're trying to solve for volts. If you're taking physics, you'll eventually see that you focus more on the formula and not just the numbers. So what do we have here? We know that we have P2 is a constant, so we have that. But notice that we're trying to solve for the voltage. So this is what we're trying to solve for. So no matter what the power is, we would have V equals 2 times that square root of P. To isolate the radical, we would divide both sides by 2. Eventually, v over 2 is equal to that square root of p. When you plug in for p in this case, you'll end up with... Oh, wait. No, you actually don't have to solve for p. Yeah, v's already isolated. Sorry. That was a bad detour. All right. So, <laughs> you already have v. When you plug in for P, you end up taking the square root of 625, which is pretty much 2 times 25. So your answer is going to be 50, 50 volts, that is. So pretty much just plug in for P. Simplify the product. Since these have the same index, we're allowed to take this further to so 1 radical, 5 times 20 square root of 100, since we're not solving for x, we can just leave this as positive 10. Multiply if possible. A few things to check here. You want to make sure that the index is the same. So double check. Are the indexes going to match up? Let me take this further. Although we could just say this is the cubic root of 36 times 6, to simplify this, hopefully you see that you have 36 in here, which is really just 6 being squared. And we're multiplying with another 6. 
So in reality, instead of just taking 6 times 36, notice that you can rewrite with exponents, start to combine those exponents. Since you're roughly taking the cubic root of 6 when it's being cubed, your answer in this case is just 6. Combining like radicals, we see that root 2 and root 2 are cool hanging out. They're both square roots with the same index. So here we have the same index. We have the same radicand. So we can definitely just combine these. So if we have three versions of this and we add on 7, this is just 10 versions of root 2. Next bit has us foiling. Eventually, we'll see this in a bit when we rationalize our denominator. I'm personally going to use box method for this. So we have 1 minus root 5, 1 plus root 5. When we take all these products, we have 1, negative root 5, positive root 5, square root of, sorry, negative square root of 25. We'll see that on the diagonal here, we have opposites. So these are actually just going to cancel, so I'm not going to even bother writing them. That being said, we have 1, and then we're deducting the square root of 25, which is pretty much just 1 minus 5. So our answer in this case is negative 4. So foiling also works here. Box method works here. I think box method just keeps everything nice and organized. Next bit has you rationalizing the denominator. This is one of the problems that I'm pretty sure students have been tripping up on. So if you need to go back and get a refresher, the main thing that was introduced here was the conjugate of the denominator. So if you need a refresher on this, I think it's section 6.3, 6.3 or 6.4. Whichever one deals with division, I'm pretty sure. So I know that I have a radical in my denominator, so I want to get rid of that. The conjugate is going to look very similar with root 2 and root 1. But in reality, what's different? We know we're going to multiply the top and the bottom, but what has to be different about this? Well, since this was adding 1, we should be subtracting 1, which is a pretty quick fix. I'll leave the foiling of the denominator up to you, but eventually you're going to end up with root 4 minus 1. But finally, with 3, multiplying with root 2 minus 1 up top. So if we take this further, we can end up with root 4 minus 1, which is just 2 minus 1, with 3 root 2, now minus 3 when you distribute. 2 minus 1 is just 1. And this is all that. I'll rearrange it because sometimes they prefer to have the whole number or the integer before the radical stuff. So that's why I rewrote it, and eventually we can just simplify this to negative 3 plus 3 root 2. Simplifying here, a radical is helpful. If you're curious how you would do something like this on a calculator, I'll show you in a moment. But 10 powers of 10 are definitely noticeable here. So this 1,000 is really just 10 being cubed and all being taken to the one-third power. So this is a power of a power property. That was reintroduced in one of the sections, which allows us to multiply these exponents together, which just leaves us with 10 to the 3 over 3 power, pretty much just 10 to the first power, which is just 10.
radical form. We have c to the 1 8th power. Break this apart. The denominator is our index. The top part is our root. c is our base. So our index goes outside with 8. Inside we have c. We can leave an exponent of 1 here, but since it's just an exponent of 1, you could just leave the cubic, or sorry, the eighth root of c and be done with it. Next part has you finding this quotient. So we're dividing. We see that the indexes are different, but we learn in this chapter that we can rewrite this with a rational exponent where 10 is our index. So we can make that in the denominator. 1 is the exponent inside, so we can make that outside. This is all over 2 to the 1 fifth power. Since we're subtracting exponents, we always subtract the bottom. So we can say this is 2 to the 1 tenth power minus 1 fifth. Get your common denominators on. Eventually, you're going to end up with 2 to the negative 1 tenth power. You'll notice in here that they want you to use radicals for your answers. So since this is negative, we're going to have to make this go to the denominator, where 10 is our index, 2 is our radicand, and we're done. The index is really crucial here, so make sure you hold on to that. We're solving, so a good rule of thumb for this. Isolate your radical first using all of the algebra skills that we've seen this year. So we isolate the radical. We then square or raise to a certain power. Power. And then we isolate x from there. These are just two of the steps. If you check the videos, there are more of them. So we have 3 squared of x minus 27 equals 15. I'm going to rewrite this here. So you get to see all the work on this one. Lucky you. So if we have 3 squared of x minus 27 equals 15, try and isolate the radical. So let's get rid of this 27. This leaves us with 3 square root of x equals 5 and 7 gets us to add on to there. What's that, 42? Divide both sides by 3. We now are left with the square root of x equals 42 over 3. So this is, what, 14? Square both sides to get rid of that radical. X is equal to 14 being squared, which if you're really so curious, we could rewrite that as 196. And that would be the only answer. There's no need for plus minus here because again, we're squaring. This one seen here, we have to solve, we check for extraneous solutions. So same kind of song and dance as we saw before, we're going to isolate our radical even though we have x outside here. So when we take this further, 4x minus 8 is under there. This is claiming we add 2, but to isolate the radical we'll deduct 2. So we're left with x minus 2 equals square root of 4x minus 8. We can square both sides, but remember, square everything. This is a really crucial step. This is where I see students trip up the most. They disregard the fact that you have to square both sides entirely. So x minus 2, if you FOIL that out, gets you x squared minus 4x plus 4 where this now equals 4x minus 8. 
when we start to move every term to the same side so we can apply the zero product property if we subtract 4x here and here and also add 8 this gets us x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0 you can definitely factor this to x minus 6 x minus 2 claiming it's equal to 0 so our potential potential answers are 6 or 2 but again double check you have to check it what's extraneous or not extraneous so how can we do this we could plug back in to either one like I'm gonna plug it back in right here so I'm going to check where x is 6. I know that way back here, this would have to be 6 equals the square root of 24 minus 8 plus 2. So pretty much 6 equals the square root of 16 plus 2. 6 equals 4 plus 2. This is right. All right, so x is definitely going to be equal to 6. We'll check if x could be equal to 2. We'll plug back in here, 2 equals square root of 4 times 2 minus 8 plus 2. Eventually, 2 equals the square root of 0 plus 2, which is a valid statement. So x can be equal to 6 or 2. So over here, I checked my work, if you're curious. Of course, you can pause the video at any time and double check, make sure everything sounds good. The next bit problem, I'm probably gonna cut because some of these answers have been equal to actual numbers, which makes your life very difficult. If you have questions on this, let me know, but roughly you would end up isolating the radical, squaring both sides, and then solving something like this, which is actually pretty simple because there's no radical, but again, this one I'm saying you can skip I won't put this on the actual test but you're capable if you want to try it out go for it and finally we conclude with solving where we have all of this under a radical x squared plus 13 equals x plus 0 sorry x plus 1 psych so we got that and same song and dance, try to isolate your radical. We are actually already capable of doing that. So if we square both sides, that gets us to foil on the right. So pretty much x squared plus 13 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is after squaring both sides. So x squareds can cancel. You're left with 13 equals 2x plus 1. When you, you eventually take it further, x is going to be equal to 6. And they asked to check for extraneous solutions, so we'll do just that. When 6 is squared, we're supposed to add 13. This is supposed to be equal to 6 plus 1. Square root of 36 plus 13 is the square root of 49 which should be equal to 6 and 1, which is 7. This checks out, so x equals 6. If you have any questions on anything you saw here, email me. You may want to take this time to pause, look back at what you've tried, double check, make sure it's similar to what you have. Thanks for watching. Best of luck studying. If you have any questions, ask in class or shoot me an email. Have a good weekend.